I'd like you to take a moment and imagine your favorite memory. Maybe it's a warm summer night and you're laying in the backyard with your family, watching the shooting stars. Or perhaps it's that first kiss with your one true love. Or maybe you remember waking up at 4 a.m. to drink beer with your buds and watch the men's Canadian hockey team take gold. Now imagine all of these memories have been erased. Sadly, for more than 34 million people worldwide who suffer from Alzheimer's disease, this is a reality. And Alzheimer's is an age-related condition. So as the world population grows older, the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease is only going to worsen. This disease is characterized by loss of memory, difficulty performing routine tasks, and changes to mood and personality, which stem from physiological changes to the brain, including irregular proteins forming plaques and the death of neuronal brain cells, which causes the entire brain to shrivel and shrink. These irregular formations cannot be cleared by the body's natural defenses. Alzheimer's disease is debilitating, and there's no known cure. Therefore, Alzheimer's disease is always fatal. But wait, there might still be hope. Researchers have recently started focusing on the role of insulin in Alzheimer's, since most Alzheimer's patients have some form of peripheral insulin resistance. This means that their bodies have plenty of insulin, but the insulin cannot get from the bloodstream into the cells that require insulin to function. So in the case of Alzheimer's disease, not enough insulin can cross the blood-brain barrier. Insulin is critical in the brain for learning, memory, and cell survival, and physically blocks the formation of these irregular protein plaques. New studies have shown that insulin can alleviate the symptoms of Alzheimer's when used in the form of a nasal spray. In this way, insulin has direct access to the brain without the blood-brain barrier getting in the way. Most researchers are looking at how insulin interacts with neurons, the main cells of the brain, and have yet to find an effective cure. Where my research differs is that in addition to studying the effects of insulin on neurons, I am actively researching the supporting cells of the brain, the glial cells, and how insulin interacts with glial cells to promote neurons to live. I have found that in an Alzheimer's disease-like state, when insulin interacts with neur neurons in the absence of glial cells, insulin provides no beneficial effect. Brain cells still die. However, I have made the exciting discovery that in an Alzheimer's disease-like state, when insulin interacts with glial cells and glial cells communicate with neurons, insulin does provide a beneficial effect and brain cells live. In short, I have found the missing piece of the puzzle, that insulin works through glial cells to promote neurons to live. Now, this is not the end of the line in the search for the cure for Alzheimer's disease, but it does provide fundamental building blocks for future research and potential targets for drug development, which could be the cure for Alzheimer's disease. This research is going to heal the sick, provide tremendous relief to burdens on our healthcare system, and protect all those precious memories that we literally cannot live without.